All right, hello everybody. Welcome tonight to the live stream. Tonight, wow. What a day this has been. And here, I'm just gonna, just a second. See, what's that? What is that? That is Hero Escape. It's, it's something that, one thing I've, I've been posting was that let me get this back is that the impossible just happened today or at least the thing that we were we were hoping for but we never knew if it was going to come to pass has happened today and we're going to talk about that tonight a little bit and by the way this live stream uh is brought to you by my internet now that doesn't stink anymore so can live live i'm ryan the uh, producer creator of tales of how the aftermath chronicles which is a stop motion hero escape adventure you can find us on youtube type in the youtube search bar tales of Valhalla, and you'll find us there and i'll probably be doing some editing later on tonight because we pl i plan to make this a pretty long live stream we're gonna edit more of episode six or episode six episode seven and and start uh get on that because we're adding the video files but for the first bit of tonight i have with me a panel of one person no there's more people going to be joining us soon but first i have jason rutherford with me tonight one of my partners in crime and he's also one of the vo one of the voice actors of uh, of this show as well as this is the guy who introduced me to HeroScape in the first place long, 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 long time ago and would constantly wipe the floor with me and every game that we played and still love the game, enjoy the game, best games ever playing that we reviewed. Jason, introduce yourself. Tell, tell the audience who you are, what you're about. All right, well, thanks for having me here. I'm the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. So I'm doing that for, oh goodness now, Long time talking miniature war game and all that fun stuff, Hero Escape and other stuff. I'm also the creator of the Caladagia Universe at EmpireUnderSiege.com. Um, that's my space combat and miniatures game. Those are my little shout out credits there. And we'll introduce uh, the other host as as soon as they come on board. Uh, they should be coming anytime, anytime, no, anytime. Please, guys, please come. No, no, we're fine. Uh, Gimbley the Giant. Welcome to the stream. What a day it's been. So pumped. Yes, we, we are so pumped. And uh, we're just going to just talk for a few minutes and then I'll start because um, I, I do have things to show, things to read and talk about. And I might, I might just start doing that right now. And as soon as uh, we have a couple other people uh, joining us on the stream tonight, and as soon as they come on, then I'll just stop what I'm doing, introduce them, and then continue. But I do want to talk let's just first of all before i start uh jason just first impressions today when did you see this announcement is when i was when i showed you the link <laughs> probably so and because I, I i showed a few people like look at this um and what were your first initial thoughts when you when you saw it so that dragon thing looks awesome that's obviously oh the gosh. kind of centerpiece of miniature of the set um, but frankly, there's not a whole lot to see there. Just about, I think I counted seven miniatures, which generally look pretty cool. And all heroes. We haven't seen any squads yet. I guarantee you, there's going to be not. squads in in this in this set. You would think so. You would think so. <laughs> you would think so. Because I know, like the swarm of the morrow was. You had the five good heroes, right. and you, had, you had, did have some squads of the morrow. Yes, you did. I don't remember the battle of the underdark. Did that have squads to it? Dungeons That's the true. Set was, Could it be more like than an underdark type of starter set? Marvel also was all heroes, wasn't it? Yes. Would so might the speculation? We'll probably talk about this later. Um, in the creation of this new starter set. Um, would it be something like Underdark, and then they might re-release um, like Rise of the Valkyrie and Storm of the Morrow as well, just for people to get into the game again? Is that a possibility? They certainly could. Um, 
Actually, I got my whole stack of visual aids here, so talking about yeah, it. Completely First right. one. Underdark had one squad. Oh, so did Underdark did have oh, one squad. Okay. Oh, Hero Quest. This is this is Hero Quest. This is an old school dungeon crawl game. It actually had some of the mechanics that would later show up in Hero Escape, the combat system anyway. And Hasbro has a license to this, and they recently re-released this on Hasbro Pulse, which is probably what they're going to do with the new Hero Escape game. Mm -hmm. um, this is the original version, obviously. But what they did is they made a complete new version, but the exact same game. And they started releasing the old expansion. So there were two expansions for this game that were easily available. And then there was two more that were like hard to get in the United States, and those started coming out as well. Plus, plus brand new stuff for it. So it's entirely possible with the new Hero Escape, they're going to do something similar, where they're going to release this new set. And if it does well, they could go back to Rise of the Valkyrie and the Swarm of the Morrow and bring in some of that old stuff because it is so hard to find and so expensive. Mm -hmm. Like, if you had the complete original set of Hero Quest before it got re-released, all, all for the U.S. expansion, it was about four to five hundred dollars for that on eBay when it didn't show up. So, you can't really, with Hero Escape, release this new set and you get similar high prices for old HeroScape stuff as well. You can't really expect a game to survive when you gotta go spend 20 bucks to get like a one miniature from, you know, you know what has been 15 years ago now. So I think you're gonna see more of this as well. I think so. It might be a wait and see. It might be they already have some stuff planned. I don't I think they have big stuff planned, personally. They probably have a few things ready to go, even though they've only announced the one thing. Most game companies do that. When they release their a new master set, they have two or three expansions, at least in development. And like with Hero Quest, when they redid this one in 2020, they had the two extra expansions all ready to go at the same time. So you could get all their base set and the two expansions right away at once the thing is released. So they're by the time we see this come out, there may be a whole, you know, a four pack of wave, like what, what they call it, the waves. They have right. the four miniature boxes. They may have a, a whole another wave uh, ready to go with it to just to start the thing off. And maybe that's where the squads will come into play. Right. And we have someone else joining us on the stream. Jeremy! Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hello, Jeremy. Introduce yourself, my man. All right. So my name is Jeremy, also known as Majora's Incarnation on Heroescapers.com, also known as Crow Toan or the SLM on Twitch. I am here with the hype because, well, all right, let me go ahead and get my camera. I can do that. Uh, the hype is huge. It's big. It's hype like, is huge. My gosh. Make sure that's on. Yes. There he is. Right. Mr. Jeremy. Yeah. Yes. I, oh my gosh. I'm so excited. So excited. But yeah, I'm here. I'm here with the, to join the hype crew. Uh, with this new release, Age of Annihilation, we're gonna be talking about that. And, um, Age of Annihilation. Yeah, it's just an awesome super, title. It's, just it's a, a good title. It's <laughs> it's a really good title. A O A, so, basically. It's a yeah, yeah. The abbreviation's really nice. Just flows off the tongue, just really well. Really well thought out naming system there. Alrighty. Yeah. And yeah. Just I was asking Jason. Um, yeah, I know you probably saw it when I sent you the link as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, what were your first initial thoughts after seeing the trailer? I thought it was fake. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I genuinely was like, man, April Fool's already passed. Y'all, you missed it. Like, you missed it. I don't know why you're doing this to us. It's really cruel. But I just, it took me a moment. to. I genuinely had to take several minutes to process what I was looking at for a little bit and then eventually i was just like hang on hang on this is real and just like rolled out of bed just freaking out just like you know throwing things like i you know just the general you know my act my usual form of activity whenever new things happen i, <laughs> I might be i might be exaggerating but let, to to note it was just a very very loud moment for me i i sent a lot of messages in in, in the span of an hour it's like uh, <laughs> it just, dude, dude. <laughs> It's, it was, oh, oh, like, yeah, my, my, my feed right now on my phone is just, it's like, hero escape, hero escape. Like, I've been posting to a ton of people. I've been following a ton of people. Like, everything is invigorated right now. The energy is palpable. You can feel the electricity of it. It is just intense. I'm super excited to be around to see this and be active in the community once more, thanks to ScapeCon, to be able to actually see this. So, 
Oof, like good stuff, good stuff. Right. Yeah, and my my initial thought was, like, day to day, it was just like, I, I and I had thought about it is like I woke up this morning, not expecting this type of thing to happen. Of course, you wake up and it's just yeah, in the yeah. back of your head <laughs> yeah. that the hope of Heroescape being revived is still there, but it's just in the back of your head. It's like a subconscious thing. And now I can wake up tomorrow morning and think Heroescape is back. It's coming back. It's yep. coming back. And I I first saw it because I got a notification from Sir Heroescape, who's, who's content creator on YouTube. And I'm sure a lot of us know Sir Heroescape. And first, like, I saw his title saying, Heroescape is back, and I thought he, like, mistyped. I thought he meant to say, Sir, <laughs> Heroescape is back. Like, like I'm like, oh, he might be announcing something for, for, um, for, from ScapeCon or something and showing some of ScapeCon videos. And then it took, like, I, I just, I jumped on his live stream, and then it just took me a few seconds of realizing that he's reading something off Heroescapers.com that... The game is back, and I'm like, oh, snap! Yeah, that just, I don't even know. Like, it, they did a good job of keeping that stuff under wraps because I heard nothing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> My first nothing. ever real result is today. Like, Abs what happened today? Positively, so. positively nothing. I think Mr. Joe Crazy is coming on board. We'll get his, we'll get his reactions in a second. Although, you should, you should see the live stream video that Joe Crazy did earlier this afternoon. It, it's yeah. just like it's how I felt on the inside because I, I'm, I'm a yeah. very like uh, calm, phlegmatic type personality, so I don't tend to like burst out, uh, you know, with these types of things. But it's just totally how I how I felt, and even though audio quality is kind of. Eh, um, on there, it's still. I'm like Joe. That's the best video you ever made <laughs> in, your, in your YouTube channel. It's just like the passion, the energy right. is 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 absolutely there. So uh, for everybody watching, I hope all the audio is coming in. Um, let me know if it isn't, but because uh, I got some background music going on in the background, and I hope that's not getting in the way of us talking and the all of us sound good. It looks good, so hopefully we are good. And uh, thank you, everybody. Anybody has any questions or uh, any any of the developers? Because I know there was some developers jumping in on Joe Crazy's yeah, I, live stream on YouTube. Okay, uh, okay. Of, of that, the game. that's blowing my mind. I know. Alone, and, that any, there are people. Anybody watching this live stream, feel free to comment. Um, we'll we'll start peppering you with questions like crazy that you can't answer, but that's right. fine. Uh, that's just going to be one of those nights, you know. It's going to be wild. But uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for uh, joining <laughs> this this live stream. Um, all of us, I mean, I think out of all of us, I mean, Jeremy, I know you got like a background in Lord Jason. You have a, a background in just gaming and, and reviewing games because I know I did a lot of podcasts with you way back in like uh, 2004 through 2010. So I know you got some knowledge um, of, of the gaming industry itself. So it's great to have you on board. Uh, Joe Crazy, um, who he's trying to load in. I don't know what's happening. Um, I think it's because I'm already using my... Okay. My, uh... Oh, your voice is there. That's fine. As long as your yeah, voice is double. here, that's I would, fine. Well, that's well Ryan, fine. You, you don't... I, there's no air gap for me to fit in my voice. <laughs> you just kept going. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't fit in there. It's the, it's I was the waiting, I was, I was expecting waiting. to pop up, actually, and, and I was talking oh. because I was waiting to see... Wait, is he coming on? I think and then I was going to introduce you. My, uh, it's because my camera is already being used for... That's fine. for um, uh, OBS. That's fine. That's fine. So, so yes. Okay. Joe Crazy, uh, introduce yourself, my man. Everybody Hi, I everybody. am Joe Crazy, thirty-one ninety-three. I make Heroescape content on YouTube. We yes, just finished up Uts Cup, our big Heroescape tournament, um, and uh, we are all here for. You know why we're here. This is. I don't know why I'm repeating <laughs> that. We all know why. This is insane. Now, <laughs> this this is kind of being a redundant thing because we already have seen your reaction. But uh, please tell us because you were someone else that I actually uh, sent you this information, and so this this is how we know how you got the information from. But initial reaction, please. <laughs> of, sure. And try, and try not to um, break the microphone. Yeah. No. 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 I'll I'll be a lot more calmer now. Right. Um, even though I think it'll still be kind of wild. Anyway. Um, so today, today I was actually, I'm, I'm currently in the process of moving. Um, I'm going to be moving in and with my girlfriend, um, this week. 
And so I was I was heading out to come home so I can go to work. And I happen, you know what? I'm gonna check my phone. Oh, it looks like Ryan messaged me. Oh, let's see what he sent me. And he sent me the video from Sir Hero Escape, and I'm like, Hero Escape is back. And I go, okay. <laughs> um, whatever you say, bro. Um, and then and then I scroll to the next link of the Twitter page, and I'm like, okay, hold on. All right, I, I, I'm carrying stuff down. I'll get in my car. I'll take a look at it. And as soon as I watched the trailer, it kind of set in. And I had to call, I had to call my girlfriend Jill right away. And I'm just ecstatic. I'm just like, I'm frozen in place in time. And I'm like, what do I do right now? I am an hour away from my home. I can't jump online right away to go react to this. I need to race home and <laughs> jump online and talk about this. And luckily, there wasn't a lot of traffic. So we're good on the traffic. Nobody to hit. Yes, but was I late for work? Yes, um, <laughs> but I think it was worth it for today. I think it was definitely worth it for today, especially the fact that I am leaving on Saturday. That Saturday is my last day for that job. So, I mean, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm still very ecstatic in this two, as to uh, one, why now? of all times <laughs> um, is I think my biggest question. Um, the fact that it's already been kind of a release that we're doing a fourth master set um, and pr doing so predictions big. on what these characters are, what's gonna come with it, what are we right. missing out on? Um, I'm sure that's in the lineup for tonight. Uh, I I'm speculating in my head of right. what who these characters are. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just don't know what to do with myself right now. And I would, um, I just, I just other would, than to, right, yeah. yeah, I don't know doing myself now either. Except I do want to just uh, shout out to some people commenting on here, um, and forgive me if I butcher names, but that's what I do. Uh, of course, uh, Gimply the Giant was commenting. Hello there. You have a question? We'll address that. Uh, let's see here, um, Jeremy. You're commenting on there. Um, Habe uh, twenty three two four seven. Uh, how's it going? Uh, Mega Man donor, I, donor D something like that. Um, welcome, uh, we, I see your comments, welcome <laughs> to the stream, anybody else want to comment, anything, we'll try to do our best to shout out and answer any questions, um, and I'll, I'll address this first one from, uh, Gimply the Giant, um, hopefully the miniatures will be painted, do you think they'll come out with squads, um, in the newest master sets? And me and Jason were actually talking about that a little bit before the stream, how Underdark, which was the last master set that was released before it was discontinued, um, either had one or none squads whatsoever so yeah they um, were a, they were working and moving away from it last right, i remember right so it might be possibly that it might be a bunch of heroes and maybe just one or two squads i they better have at least one squad yeah yeah because you still would need your squads you know we still need, yeah we still need the we still need that synergy <laughs> and then about the painting i honestly think that they will p paint these things uh because i don't think they want to stray too far from what HeroScape was um, and what it is what it is now for people who would be familiar with them. I mean, some of us out there, you know, would love to paint the things. Personally, not me. Uh, I like the <laughs> pre-painted stuff, um, and then everyone else can, like, paint over if they want to. Uh, but uh, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Uh, uh, no, wait, wait, we're I, in a circle here. Jason, go ahead and go first. <laughs> okay. I vote, I'm going to be the guy who says they're not going to be pre-painted this time around. Okay. Um, and two reasons for that is one, the industry is a lot different now. Back when HeroScape first came out, there was a lot of pre-painted stuff. The WizKids entire line was pre-painted. Games Workshop even had some pre-painted Lord of the Rings stuff. That doesn't really exist a whole lot anymore. HeroClix is still around, but that's about the only major pre-painted game out there. And it's just cheaper for Hasbro to not get them pre-painted. And that kind of ties in the number two right now is that at least with getting stuff from China to the United States where they'd be, if they're going to be pre-painted, they're going to be painted in China. That supply chain is still a bit iffy right now right. For, ga just for gaming companies. And that's going to add a lot of cost just in the shipping alone to, if they really want to do that. Where if they don't go the pre-painted route, they can manufacture the stuff relatively cheaply even in the United States and not have to deal with that. Right. Jeremy? Uh, yeah, honestly, as far as the, the business side of things, it does seem to make sense that they would avoid, you know, higher costs. It's part of the reason why, if I recall, 
part of the reason why HeroScape had to be discontinued in the first place was its high cost. Like the overhead was too much for the company at the time. So it's like, you know, if they can save money, they're probably going to do that. Plus, you know, in this new age of 3D printing and things like that, like a lot of stuff gets already the, the colored plastic that they use for the characters and stuff like that. Uh, Hero Forge is a big example, at least to me, is that you can pay for those characters to be printed colored or pay for them to be not colored, but paintable, but they don't have like a pre-painted option. The idea of pre-painted characters has phased out since HeroScape has been discontinued. And so, you know, the expectation, I would say, don't, 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 uh, be too upset if they come out. Uh, pretty, uh, I won't unpainted. be upset either way. Nothing's going to make No, I'm, I'm going to be, and yeah, I'm going to do my best points. with the painting. I, they're going to be pretty terrible options. I, I, I don't trust my, my, my skill level, but <laughs> I'm going to do my best, you know? <laughs> What are your thoughts, Joe? Joe? He might be he might be on his on his line. I'll give him I'll give him a second to answer. <laughs> uh, but and then uh, let's see here, how about a 2327? Uh, if you had to guess the price ranges, how much should I be saving? How much does that change uh, based on if they're painted or not? Uh, good question, because um, cost is always is is always a thing. I mean, if it's anywhere between fifty and a hundred dollars, I'm I'm pre-ordering it times three. It's still. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, Jason. <clears throat> it depends the final miniature cost or final miniature amount, but I would not be surprised to see a hundred, a hundred fifty dollar price tag on right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'll justify that again. Um, Hero Quest, which I showed off earlier, when they re-released this thing, $130 for the starter set. And it's got about, I think, 40 plastic miniatures not painted, plus a bunch of cardboard stuff. And so there's no even plastic gaming tiles that you get in Heroscape. Um, and also, other classic game they re released a while ago, ago, Fireball Island, which is an old school kids game. When that got re-released, that was like a $70, $80 price tag on that for, you know, what is a basic over glorified kids game. So, I, $100 is kind of the going rate for a box set, large scale um, board game right now. Uh, Joe, I think, I think you're back on... Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, so, first question uh, was... Wait, where is it? Uh... Uh, wait, wow, there's a few more questions, actually. Okay, I, I skipped one. Wait, wait. I'm, I'm sure there, there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, hopefully the miniatures will be painted. Uh, do you think they'll come out with squads um, in the newest Master sets? What are your thoughts? Sorry, what? Uh, do you think they're going to be painted, and do you think they're going to be squads? Oh, squads? Easy, yes. Absolutely, there's going to be squads. Um, it'd be weird. It'd be weird to have Heroscape without squats, even though it's called Heroscape. Um, but <clears throat> I don't, as of they're painted, I I'm gonna presume so. My guess, my bet would be yes, because that's what everything originally. Um, the fact that they're doing this at all, presume, I would assume they have a budget for this. <laughs> um, I hope so. I, I hope there's a big budget for this. I mean, then again, they haven't, they haven't released anything about what and how they're releasing things this could they could easily say okay you know what this is what we have we have one master set this is what we want to put out for it um and then everybody raise your hand who wants one and then we just all raise our hands and they're just gonna make ones for the, for our sets and that's it you right. know like they could just easily just do who wants one we're gonna run it for a year um or a couple of months we're gonna make, we're gonna pro produce them for a certain amount of time, put them out there, and then then that's that's it. And um, pr production we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and then I wanted to a ask you as well, if you had to guess the price ranges, what do you think the price ranges would be um, based on whether they're painted or not? Um, for the master set alone? I mean, I don't even remember what I paid for the original one because I was a kid, it was gifted to me. Um, I, but I with, with our days and age, I mean, honestly, honestly, I'm looking at the 250 range. 250, okay. <laughs> um, because oh, have cheers. you, have you, have you? I mean, you guys think that's high or low? Because if you've seen anything yeah, coming out of of like independent games that you find on Kickstarter, that's uh, that could be 
that could be in that price range. Um, cause I was, I was looking at, there's a Rainbow Six board game. They came out with a Rainbow Six board game. Um, and I was looking to get into it and buying it. And I think to get everything, um, in there, and I think that what, I'm not sure, I don't know if it was painted figures or not, but to get all the expansions, all the characters, I mean, there was over that, at least point, like, 30 characters that you can get, um, figures, and it had smoke bomb, the little plastic smoke bomb things and cameras and drones it had the whole thing and i think we're looking at 200 250 bucks jeremy um, uh, uh, okay and jeremy what do you think so price range i i feel like i'm out of out of my element here particularly talking about costs because i haven't you know i bought hero escape when it first came out and back then if i remember it was at least 40 50 dollars right i i remember it being a really easy range because i was you know i cut grass for it <laughs> and uh you know so i was able to cut grass cut lawns earn the money for it buy it and it didn't really bug me in terms of like finances so so you know i don't think if if, if inflation is the reason for this or whatever you know like i wouldn't be able to say like i'm i'm still hoping it's the original cost of 50 dollars or so or whatever but if it's like $100, wow you're you're right wow 50 what a, bucks yeah it was it, it was it 50 dollars because i remember it originally being like the original master set was yeah like, i just really typed affordable. it in it said the rise of the valkyrie master set was only 50 yeah. bucks yeah so i'm yeah. hoping i'm hoping that sticks around that would be awesome <laughs> yeah, <that's our> hope. <laughs> the, i mean the 100 dollar thing gonna be I, yeah it is 12 years later it is 12 years later so in terms of the economy and price rising and things makes sense it would be about 100 I would be sad if that's the case, but also not, you know, I would probably also just go straight forward because it's HeroScape and I've, I'm not going to say how much money I've spent on HeroScape, but I know I've spent a lot. So yeah, we're just yeah, going to leave it at Absolutely that. Absolutely way too much. We just, we don't. <laughs> now, about eight years ago-ish or so, Hasbro released um, Magic the Gathering Arena, the Planeswalkers. Yeah. That was basically a cheap kind of cheap version of HeroScape in terms of it was the same basic game but it was Magic the Gathering branded and that was a $40 set with like about 25 plastic miniatures only four of the main hero characters were pre-painted so and that was about 40 bucks so I, we're not going to see those old school not, not I, 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 our best guess yeah it's it probably not going to it's going to be up but that's okay it's still going to be darn worth it um now <laughs> it, it's it, you know the funny thing is you know I haven't even gotten on my first point yet, and we're already a half hour into the stream. I thought, oh, this will take an hour. This is probably going to take all night. This is probably going to take no, all night. Why would you ever the think that? Real. Brace yourselves. The hype is real. Brace yourselves tonight, because we're going to keep on going through this. Now, um, before I get to the what I wanted to start out with, um, I, I do want to address, there's a couple more comments here. We have Sky Knight, and we have Zorloff on uh, commenting on the stream, so I just wanted to recognize you guys, say hi, and just wanted to say they're saying, uh, um, Sky Knight saying, these are exciting times. Um, and I think both the both these um, both these peoples are involved uh, with, uh, in some way, the production of yeah, this yeah. game. So uh, Sky Knight says, these are exciting times. Uh, thanks, gents, for your enthusiasm. If any of you are at Gen Con, go see Craig um, at the booth. He's a very approachable guy and loves to talk to fans. And all so right, who <laughs> Quick, let's let's all head to Indiana right now. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go to Gen Con. I'm gonna make sure he gets pictures of it for us. Uh, Heck yeah. Yes, please do and and approach. Uh, try and yeah, try and approach for Craig Van Ness and get questions. We need questions answered. But uh, and Zorloff says yes, Craig is the best and loves to talk here escape. And um, I you know I'm gonna say something right now, um, just for me personally when it comes to Tales of Ahala. Um, since we have people involved in the production right now, and this is just me being incredibly selfish, but <laughs> uh, you guys who's involved in production, if you're in contact with Craig Van Ness and have not seen, if he has not seen Tales of Ahala content, have him watch at least the last episode that we released or the trailer for season two and let him know if there is uh, if there is some way that they're producing like advertising or um, or any way um, that do, they're doing because we're gonna break down that trailer from a filmmaking perspective and uh, and just just um, my, my observations on it um, but uh, this is someone that has done stop-motion animation to these characters for several years 
and yep. you have no one else out there in the world that has that experience. And <laughs> Craig Van Ness, this is for you. Call me. If, if there's any way <laughs> you want this type of stop motion animation as like advertising or storytelling with your stuff, let's talk or, 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 or grab um, whoever's involved in the uh, media, media production side of that. Call me. Call me right now because you're not going to find anybody else in the world out there because there ain't nothing else like this out there. Anyway, okay, I, wanted, I was gonna, I was going to save that for the end of the stream, but since there's people already on board listening Big about facts. that, um, okay. yeah, that's one. That's why I wanted to get that out. Okay. Uh, anyway, but, a side conversation. My friend at Gen Con was going to get in pictures. Uh, so anyway, yeah, but no, th th thanks everybody joining the screen, and please feel free to keep on commenting, keep on asking questions, observances, any any insights that you want to tell us about this game. Uh, like I said before, I joke crazy scene. Tell us if we're warm. If you want to, if you want to drop brand new pictures in the stream chat, um, or just send Dude. links, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but we're if you want people to know things. about the game, they're here tonight. Oh yeah, no, we will, we will, we will do the advertising for you. <laughs> you don't have yes. to. Yes, just you know give what? us the you, information. We'll I don't need that. Even, I haven't been paid for the past several years for doing this. You content. don't. You do not. <laughs> just, I just tell, just tell, tell now. Credit Van Ness. Tell Craig Van Ness. Tell all the all the, whoever the PR team is, whoever the HR team is. Just be like, there is a bunch of people on Twitch. Dot com right or twitch.tv right now there are a bunch of people on youtube right now that will do the advertising for right free here i have a lore master right <laughs> here jeremy who's been heavily involved in story get him involved in story uh, yes i will write i will write, I will write anything you need me to write i will avalon, I, I, avalon hill hire that guy I, <laughs> my gosh I'm surprised. I, I honestly, it. wasn't surprised that you were involved in the production in the first place. At least when it comes to war. Um, oh, I or, couldn't. Or, or, I couldn't just, keep my mouth shut. I, they, they probably, they probably are like, don't ask that guy. He'll, he'll talk. <laughs> he'll talk. <laughs> All right. Well, how about we get started with this now? I'm going to read what was on HeroScapers.com that posted earlier today, along with uh, the the teaser. That well, first, um, let me play the teaser again one more time. Um, and uh, and just show that off. Then, then I'm going to read what was on HeroScapers.com. Uh, yeah, get earlier. your popcorn, guys, because it is a long one. Yeah. It's yeah, so seriously. long. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my goodness, makes tales of a how Two hours and 35 minutes of straight Hero Escape trailers. Right. Where's the 10 yeah, hour YouTube video season. of 18 seconds repeating for 10 hours? Where is that? All right, so let's let's just play this here. I'm gonna just mute. Oh, actually, I can't mute. Okay, just everybody be quiet. <laughs> be quiet, people, <laughs> for for a few seconds. But no, I'm just gonna post this here above. Okay, hold on a second. Let's just let's just play this again in its glory. Yeah, the, the sound's gonna be high on this. So, all right, everybody, just bear with it. All right. The fire. The embers. I love the embers. So was that too long? I, I think. I think. Uh, no, way, way no, 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 no. no. You know what? That's actually long. enough. That was, I don't need any more. That, that, that was way too much. Thanks. That was just way too much. Way too, too much. Long. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I think it could have been 15 seconds, honestly. Oh, I think man. they could have edited that down. We didn't. We didn't need that full setup. We already knew what we were getting into. <laughs> and we're gonna break down break down that uh, in a second as well. But first, let me go to. Let's see, I may find it. Okay, pop that. I have so many windows. There's just so many windows <laughs> right now. But here, I'm gonna read this. All right, I'm gonna post this. Pop pop this up here. Okay, so go back. Okay, welcome back, HeroScape. This is, this is what. It, so it says this is what uh, was originally posted by Truth, edited by uh, Zorloff. On November 3, 2010, Wizards of the Coast announced the end of the official HeroScape line. <sighs> well, today at Gen Con, August 3, 2022, Hasbro announced the return of HeroScape. See uh. HeroScape's awesome official announcement with cool new graphics right here, which we just watched, with the un incomparable Craig Van Ness at the helm. 
Design work on the new master set is well underway. Craig's team has involved their own communities. Dadscaper, Doc, Kevin Dola, Sky Knight, and Zorlorf, and Craig himself has been the running point. There is lots that the team members can't discuss right now, but some of that it can. For instance, we were told early on that this revival is possible because of you. That That is us. That is us content creators. That is us people that have been on Hero Escapers for so long that hung on to just that sliver of hope, that sliver of hope that this could be released someday again. All the 3D printing, all the videos, all the, all the stories that were written, all... All, it's all of us, guys. It's all of us. That is you. Congratulations. We did it. Pat yourselves on the back. <laughs> That's right. The ongoing community support for our beloved game was one of the essential ingredients in the decision to bring it back. For now, let's just sit tight. Well, uh, good luck with that. And wait for more information. Good luck with that, too. While we pick the brains <laughs> of the team members for as much information as they is offer or <laughs> okay type of there as they are authorized to share. Welcome back, official skate. Yes, yes. It's, it's so. Ladies it's, and gentlemen, uh, just the vibe. The vibe is so good. I love it. Yes. Okay. Look at that logo. I've been wanting to get it, get it, get that out for like all day. So let me, let me revert this back here because I was having this on the background. See, Ember's going back. We're going to actually do a trailer breakdown here on the live stream tonight. But first of all, let's just comment on that logo, okay? Nice and clean. Very nice and clean. Very well done. Whoever oh, whoever yeah. designed this, just mm, mm, spot on how it dissolves, like uh, like the special effects and how it just leaves the embers behind. Just That's just like... Right. That That's some um, next level... Uh, stuff right there got a good graphic oh, designer hands down this uh, is special effects i mean there for sure i mean even that title age of annihilation yeah th there is there is nothing out of all the master sets i mean the rise i mean the rise of the valkyrie you know is an awesome name i love that super iconic but age of annihilation definitely sounds like the end of something and, and the i mean i have know, my th i have my theories but you know that's all they are. I can't really say. No, like, exactly. No, exactly. Like, because even because even I feel in like I know trailer, where they're going with it. There's a possible direction they're going with it, but I, I don't know. Sure. Like, it hasn't. The story hasn't been touched in 12 years, so who knows? They probably got way more <sighs> info. Yeah. So, let's see. And let's see here, we got Gotex, uh, Arable. Again, I apologize if I butcher names uh, on the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we'll address some of your comments in. in well. Sometime. We'll, we'll address comments sometime. Right now, we're, we're, we're <laughs> deep in those. But I'm looking at them. I'm looking at them. Um, and so Gen Con hasn't even started yet. Is that the case? That's what you said, Jason? Yeah, yeah. Gen Con hasn't started right, yet. So it starts tomorrow. You said tomorrow. that too, Jason, as, as well, that Gen Con hasn't started yet. So, yeah, who knows what else we're going to get? Oh, my gosh. Okay, anyway. All right. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> so let's go back to the beginning because there's a couple things here that I want to I wanna point out for the stream. First of all, just, I love the fire effects here but do you notice okay you see right there you see this frame there's some hexes. oh there's the right hexes there. so, yo i didn't even notice yeah, that yeah so, whoa so whoa one thing one thing i want to say is that um from from a filmmaking perspective because i was trying to analyze this and and jason joe um tell me what you guys think because how they did this how they made this little trailer do you think that um, possibly because there's a couple ways they could have done it. They could have like um, had a real life set that they that they that they panned and, and and they filmed and then just added on the CGI, or they could have digitally scanned something they built and then um, did it full CGI based on what they scanned. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Um. I right, so you want to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jason. Okay. I think what you're looking at is a mostly practical set with the visual effects composited in later. Right. Um, so what you probably got is a tower of modified HeroScape pieces there because they're clearly not normal HeroScape. It's got weird little decorations on top, and you've got little twigs and rocks and things that are not ever been released for HeroScape. Right. And... Things like the lava, that is a composite effect that's done right. 
later on. Most certainly. And the reason for that, well, the reason for that and not it being a 3D render is the light is not interacting the way with the miniatures from the lava you'd expect if it was a 3D rendered all in one thing. It looks more like someone went into a, a video, highlighted some stuff, and added the glowy effects. Right. Um, mm. Because I would be expecting to see little bits of the glowing lava either flickering or interacting with, say, the chest of the dragon. Um, because he's kind of, it looks to be kind of standing where at least a little bit of that orange glow would be on his body. And you'd often see that if you have a light source in a 3D render, 3D rendered scene. But you don't see that here, which is suggests it's more of a area of light added in with like a mask tool in, say, a um, hit film or Adobe right. After Effects. Thank you, Brain. After Effects. <laughs> Joe? I don't think, I mean, to answer your question, yeah, it's probably just all, I, I just probably think at this point it's all CG rendered. Um, but talking about the lava, I don't, I don't think it's out of the question to say that, um, that they, because we don't have a, a, a tile like that. No, we don't. I, I don't think it's far out of the question to say that they could come out with a, like a, like a, a, glow, a molten lava, a glow in thick the dark, molten like lava. That. Yeah. Why not? Why not do a glow in the dark molten lava? Just, oh, yeah. just, just please don't make it a Toys R Us exclusive again. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, that was such a difficult thing to work with. Right, and so uh, okay, I'm gonna go back here. So, like I said, yeah, I noticed I noticed some some of those tiles at the beginning there. So that why, and that tells me either, yeah, a they they like had this set up to where they just they passed a camera through, um, and then added the digital stuff later. Or, I mean, there is 3D scan technology out there for that. So I don't know what's the cheaper um, way, because, I mean, 3D scanning, depending on what you get, could be actually um, more cost-effective than it would be doing it the, um, the kind of stop motion and then, and then put everything away. So, I, I don't know. Jason, oh. I, I do think, though, you're probably more right um, in that aspect, but um, I'm just not 100% sure. Now, all these miniatures in every game this day, these days are designed in a computer. So they already have a 3D model of them. So right. you wouldn't need to say 3D scan, you know, memoring here because you already have the 3D model if he was designed here in 2022. Right. Um, so you could just drop those 3D models in there. But that's, I don't know, depends on how much money they want to pay for. Because that's a different 3D right. animation, 3D rendering, 3D lighting is a completely different skill set than some guy who knows After Effects. Right. And since most of that, most of the, you know, the embers there is just, you know, they got to sell the stock um, ember pack of, you know, fire effects and drop that in. And the whole logo is all just run them is like um, after effects stuff. They may have just ran with someone who has that kind of a skill set. I don't know. Right. And they, yeah, they could have like had someone edit and make this from an outside source. Actually, that, that'd probably yeah, be the case they that they, they would have uh, had some type of uh, production company do this uh, as well. Like, initially so yeah that 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 that's a possibility too now one thing i want to point out now here cuz it would be really fun if someone did build this whole set and they added stuff later which it, that might be the case and if that's the right. case then if you see down here before you pan up to the top of this mountain do you notice that there's a bunch of lava tile at the bottom here it's really hard because it passes by quickly but there's a bunch of lava tile and then there's actually like a huge like a little bit bigger of a lava tile that might indicate like a lava mountain thing possibly Either you're saying that this this entire thing. set here is a lava mountain yes yeah possibly well with lava in it oh. but but there's like a little lava mountain. if you see my stream like there's just this frame that might possibly because we have like granite mountains ice mountains what if they're making a lava flow mountain type thing That'd be insane. Yeah. I just yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, just, I mean, it's, I mean look, it's not out of the question, but I, I mean, to put it to to come back with this master set to have, you know, like I said, it's not out of the question to do more lava, but we already have lava in the game. Mm -hmm. um, but we need so more. they definitely have. We could do more. Well, yeah, but like even with the three D printed lava that you can get now as well, plus the original stuff, um, you know, but like the, like I said, the, what would be cool is if that yes. 
um, that if this lava did have a different rule set, or it just it's a thick lava instead of a thin you know slice of red ice, you know, um, it, it's all the same tile. But if we don't have like a thick molten lava like that, um, you know, maybe it acts differently. Like a you, maybe you sink into it like a like a um, uh, a quicksand. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, this just could be a, a design choice. Um, it, it's, it's really hard to tell, um, right. with the set dressing. I mean, I think it's just, I think this set des dressing was just for the age of annihilation, oh. you know, this whole doom and gloom looking, but like, look, you could see in the background, there's a sun shining in the back there. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that this sky background, that's CGI, that, 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 that that's definitely like something that was, yeah, like, yes, copy, yes, copy and paste yes, it in. Sure. I'm, although that would be, yeah. that would be one heck of a trying to cut around all these figures and so, or it, it's, it would be one type of, or they had a green screen in the back. That's probably what they did. They had a green <laughs> screen in the back and they just planted that in. So otherwise, yeah, that cut and paste would be, oh my goodness, tremendous. Um, now what about so, these trees or yeah, Jason, you more. You want to say something? Yeah, I've, I've been watching this thing just back and forth between right. um, four seconds and about seven seconds. Uh -huh. And what you can see is you've got about three planes to the video. So you have the miniatures are on, and the mountain they're on. Then there's a background plane. You can tell that um, there. You're, when you zoom right. in, after, when, after the thing scrolls to the top of the mountain and starts zooming in, there's a parallax effect from... From the miniatures in the front versus the background plane and then the sky moves separate of all of those other ones so it's you're basically looking at three images stacked on top of each other um being animated independently to simulate a 3d camera effect that makes that's sense. really cool yeah that, that makes sense um now one thing i want to put like these trees I guarantee you we're going to have some type of these type of trees in the game there's and you can see trees and tree stumps but look at the terrain itself. Do you notice that the terrain itself is kind of bumpy, rocky? Like rock terrain is actually going to be rock terrain to where it's going to have these bumps. Do you notice these bumps on top of these terrains? Mm. I they're, they're don't know if that's indicates... something that they want to implement into the game itself. I think that just could be to emphasize the 3D modeling that they're doing here. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I think maybe we be a new type of terrain that's an actual rock terrain, like a cover, like a rock, cover for the mountain rough, or something. Rough, rough edges. I could be wrong, but the way that what I'm seeing here, um, this might be actual rock, rock terrain. And then, and imagine, then, imagine losing because you got stuck behind the rocks. Uh -huh. <laughs> couldn't move out. Well, like it's, but what, possible. what purpose? What purpose would that be for the game itself? It doesn't block line of sight. If it just stops movement, they might. Yeah, um, just I think stopping, stopping movement causes a lot of issues. So it might just be that to stop movement and get or people it might be like just corner them. It could be just yeah, or, so we're fine with that. We're completely yeah. fine with that. Uh, but no, one thing I think, yeah, you're fine with it. <laughs> Of course you want more aesthetics. You got them. You got aesthetics. Have you not seen that last episode? <laughs> anybody, anybody Shit has looking it. fine. All, all, all the, looking good. All, all, those, all, all those of you on uh, the Twitch channel or, or watching this. <laughs> yeah, go, go, to, go to Tales of Hell YouTube channel and um, type in YouTube search bar Tales of Hell. Watch our most recent episode and you'll see a lot of high ground tiles stuff, a lot of sand tiles. Um, a lot of a lot of trains that you probably have never seen before um, that will have nothing to do with what's what's coming up, but visually, aesthetically, yeah, it's 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 very very pleasing. But no, one thing I want to just point out that like I guarantee you, like probably gonna get like trees like these, tree stumps like these, um, with these terrains. Uh, I just and that's what I'm just thinking, just based off because if they if why would they show it if they're not gonna release something like it? Right. You know, so it's not just. The I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the terrain itself. You know. So, oh, yeah, I think we're in for a big um, box. Whatever master set they come up with. So here's the first thing: angled surfaces and uneven planes on the on the battlefield are just the bane of miniature wargaming. <laughs> I mean, if you try to set a miniature on angle, it, oh, there's going to be something that eventually causes it to fall over. Whether it gets bumped or it's too top heavy or whatever it is, so these little decorative pieces they have in the trailer here—if they're ever going to release them, 
it's almost going to have to be some sort of effect to where you can't stand in that space. Maybe you can jump over it or Maybe. something like that. Just because it's just a tabletop war gamers basically go to great lengths of building these fancy Warhammer boards to either make sure there's no angles to the hills or they're so gentle that the miniatures won't fall over because it just always happens. Right. No, absolutely, Jason. Um, yeah, so I, I I really don't think... I mean, look, if they're going to put those type of rocks into the game, I feel like it's kind of silly to do that because we already have rocks that do that to the exact same job. Block movement and block line of sight. But have a rock, stuff, though, yeah. that doesn't block line of sight, but just block movement will only give... Uh, ranged units more power more power <laughs> and i don't think ranged units Stingers. need more power <laughs> um, everyone. and so even even with having uh I, you know we actually would be really cool i'm just thinking of this this what if the tiles that they come out with are give you a decayed type of effect it's like a poison effect mm -hmm. um you know this land is dead um so maybe if it, it's kind of like lava in the sense where if you stand on it Maybe at the end of the round, you have to roll the attack die. Um, or maybe if you stand on it, you get one less defense die or something. Um, you know, to kind of like reverse the effect, um, you know, for certain things. So it, it, we could be looking at a different type of terrain with a different rule set. Um, and maybe that's why all of the trees are gone and the rocks are crumbled. Because the, the terrain itself is decaying. Um and so everything on there is is you know manipulated and changed, um, but to have these type of trees it, it'd be silly too. So the yeah, I mean for me yeah, it's purely aesthetics. I don't know how that would uh, anti shadow pieces. <laughs> um, <laughs> everything has a purpose and a reason. It can't just be. Right. It looks cool. Uh, it just can't be. Don't destroy my dream though. But yeah, I I know I understand, I understand what you guys are saying. <laughs> One housekeeping thing. There is a thunderstorm hitting my town, and this happened to me like a week or two ago to where a thunderstorm totally knocked out the power and cut off the live stream. So if that happens, I will be right back on as soon as the power comes back on. Hopefully, it's not too strong of a storm. But uh, I heard thunder, and it happened before, so I'm just giving a, I'm just giving a shout out to everybody. If, if the live stream all of a sudden cuts off, it's because a thunderstorm hit and power went out, but hopefully that will not happen, and I will not have to mention it again, but I just wanted to say that. Well, as soon as as soon as you hear thunder, just say something really controversial about the game, like, oh "Dude, goodness. it's coming out tomorrow," and then just like cut out, like it just no <laughs> the torment, the torment. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about now the big elephant in the room, or the big dragon in the room. I think that's a dragon. Uh, the miniatures themselves. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I do have another photo, too, that was uh, on uh, HeroScaper's uh, Facebook that someone from Gen Con posted. I think it was someone who was running the booth. Um, thank you uh, to, yeah. to who, who you are. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but thank you so much. Uh, let, me, let me just bring this up, too, so some of these miniatures here. Now, these are painted. That And so even though I'm sure these models are just, like, they're, they're not... They're, the mainstream models yet these are painted they they look painted so this 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 also kind of forwards my guess that um these will come painted there might be actually a painted pre-paint or, or not painted option maybe who knows but different prices yeah, yeah. but if this but will this, be a kickstarter of some sort i'm sure that might be an option yeah right right so so my guess is that they there there is going to be a painted option but anyway Aside from that, what do we think of these miniatures? I mean, I think um, like I was inspecting like a close up of let's see, let me let me just get a little bit closer on these. Uh, like first of all, yeah, the big elephant in the room, this dragon like creature. I don't know if it's a dragon or what. what oh, that's a dragon. Think? Yeah, dragon. It looks like feathered wing, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. feathered wing. I don't know what this is. Are we looking at possibly a new faction, or could this be like Aquila or or or? I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Things and stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, if you want to go with the lore perspective, at least what they left us with back in the day, uh, this this is coming off of the last 
official scenario that was released by the guru back in 2011. No, so he he wasn't able to release it for a while because of his, the back end work and stuff he had to do. But he released a it was I want to say it was Cavern of Shadow or Shattered Cavern was the name of it, and it was the last official scenario to be released prior to the discontinuation. And that scenario ended when Valkyrie was given his powers to summon from the Wellsprings. And r like right at that instance, like if you're playing that scenario, they describe him rising up and then he started summoning all of these demons and all these monsters and things like that. And that was the last bit of lore we got until the game is over. So my guess, as and in chat, chat, chat is uh, saying the same name, right. I think it's Valkyrie unit. That is one of the Valkyrie units that was summoned, and it's tying into the whole concept of Age of Annihilation, because Valkyrie gives off the vibes of complete destruction. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. That Just sense. wanting to destroy everything and bring it to to fire and bring it to ruin. So that's my that's my guess. It's a Valkyrie unit, and it's basically the Valkyrie beast of you know the 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 what do you call it the the nuke the Valkyrie nuke is yeah, this unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! No, yeah, I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. What do you think, Jason? Uh, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it makes sense of where they, they carry on where they left off, I guess. You know, mm -hmm. and then if they want to introduce other things in the future, then then they can. I mean, just the fact that we know it's Van Ness and others within the Heroescape community that are doing this—they know what we want, what we like. Oh yeah, they they've been on forums. And, and, and you know, so, they read our stuff. And so I mean, all those heads put together, I'm sure they're doing their best to make it as satisfying as they can possibly make it. So, I I trust. I, I'm mm -hmm. doing my best to trust in that process, <laughs> and and I think our trust is uh, is 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 in a very good place. Um, now there was there was a couple of these that couple of these fallen miniatures that have guns actually so part of me is thinking that one might be from vidar maybe one is from uh einar what, what do you what are you guys' thoughts on that um it's the ones like in the forefront here and i think in the video itself here let me, let me get to the video part of this <laughs> I can't, I can't i'm gonna the, guess who is struggling the one guy that kind of looks like a um like 18th century privateer character with he's holding like He's got the, the bullets around him. He's got the tricorder. He's rocking one of these suckers on him. Um, oh, he looks like I he's got easy um, green. He looks green. Which which ones? Yeah, who is that? The one in the bottom right corner? Or the bottom front? This one? Bottom front, I think so, yes. Yeah. He In the trailer, he's three from the left. <laughs> I think he he might be Jandar because he kind of has that. Like, I don't think that's the same guy. Vibe to him. Hmm. What? It's in Jason, the I don't think that's the same guy. Oh, the one holding the rifle or whatever thing. Possibly. Because the other guy's holding a cleaver. In the trailer, he's holding Someone's some kind of cleaver Jandar. or knife. My, my yeah. This guy who's, isn't. Who's Jandar? Oh, okay. Like, yeah, that, that's that's a good question. That's a that's a different character at all. I mean, that looks like some. I mean, I mean, from here it looks like a he's he's green. He's he's got a green tinged skin. Um, Could be Eller, maybe, because Eller tends to be kind of green. I don't know. Hmm. So I mean, I I mean, he could he could be like an alien bounty hunter cowboy. Right, um, right. And we don't really have a lot of cowboys. We, need, we have we lawmen. lawmen. We need we need more lawmen. We do absolutely. need lawmen. Yeah, we absolutely because I just need more I just collected all the lawmen mm -hmm. and the new custom ones we got from ScapeCon, smack hard. They are awesome army. We need more <laughs> lawmen. Now my question um, is, uh, in the like in the, like it's the let's see if you go from the right, starting from the right, there's like a, like a there's like a goblin like creature with a big axe, and then um, next to that and kind of like the back, kind of facing away. Well, I think we only see its back is this or maybe it's its front if it's front then it's this creature that has like a lot of tentacles or a big beard or long hair oh. that's green do you see that yeah in the I, top uh... in the top right corner he kind of kind of, kind of has like a um right yes just the one the one with all the tentacles yes yes that what is that my uh i sent the photo to my sisters and they're calling that character davy jones 
already. Yeah, I was gonna say so. Davy yeah, Jones. Beard. That, that, that's, that's what I was thinking. The, the Davy Jones character. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and and Arable and hello Arable, welcome welcome to the live stream. Uh, Gotex, uh, you too. Um, Dave uh, Conklin, uh, welcome welcome. I'm glad you guys uh, can join us. Um, but Arable says most most important question is what happens to Samuel Brown. Sam Brown got the troop like he troops. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you can tell there's like orc goblin ogre type creatures here. I guarantee mm -hmm. you one miniature that's definitely Valkyrill is the one farthest left that's got like the four hands. Right. That's definitely oh. looks Valkyrill like. Or like the four swords or whatever, like the four blades that it has, the four arms. Oh, yeah, that... The four arm creature. That is definitely got to be Valkyrie. I want to know everything about him. He looks <laughs> like the coolest uh, next to the dragon. Um, But I almost I almost hope he's like a bug creature. Um, Because of his four arms. I hope he's kind of... Like, I just want more assassins and stuff because... Or maybe he's a pirate. Um, He's an alien pirate. You know... I would not mind pirates. I, I I would not mind pirates in the slightest and them come up with some type of seafaring to really make use of them water tiles. Um, oh, yeah. Maybe have like a tile boat or something like that or some type mm. of like... Uh, uh, well, high ground we has castles. a boat. We, we build castles. Why don't we build like like a pirate town or a pirate fortress? Come on. Let's have it. That would be pretty dope. Hi. Um here yeah, will will Samuel Brown ever release? That that's that's one of the questions that that um Arable is asking. What do you guys think? Who knows? Is he not? I mean, well, cuz so Sam Sorry. Brown came, was uh they released the card. They never released the character and they were telling oh. us to repaint one of the fourth mass units. Like, Sam Brown is an official character, but they were never able to release a, like a unit for him. So they had us repaint like they would tell us how to paint the character properly. If I remember, oh. I don't think they ever actually made the unit like an actual unit unit. Like, Wait, and we like, got something from Zorloff saying right now that Sam Brown is already official. Yeah, the character is official. You just you the unit but itself you, was never to, made. It okay. was just the uh, the card was posted. Zorloff, does that mean that Sam Brown might be in future sets officially? <laughs> is that what you tried wish. to hint or the does it wish. just mean it's already official within no it's a i, I think it's an official unit in heroes game like you can yeah, play yeah, him for yeah sure. for sure okay but this would be also a, a cool time to Bring officially release a figure yeah, though mass i mean let's mass produce come on yeah <laughs> <not be> rare. <laughs> All right. that's so funny okay i'm gonna i'm gonna actually like scroll through because we had a few comments come in i want to address some of these so uh, let me let me backtrack a little bit here for a second and just um address some of these things uh see our go text is very excited been waiting this for years yes all of us not just wait just hoping not not waiting but actually just hoping hoping to hope just this little my, my, of hope. my last resort plan was to become a millionaire and buy the ip <laughs> i wasn't there i haven't got there yet unfortunately but and the goal, the goal was to get a million dollars, and then I was gonna go to the Hasbro and be like, "Look, y'all ain't touching this. Let me do something." But yeah. hey, they're touching it, so I'm and like, "Cool, good job." Yeah, David, <laughs> I don't have to, I have, get the, I don't have to get a million dollars now. <laughs> David Alexander, um, hello, David Alexander. I'm sorry I didn't shout you out earlier. I asked a question, and this is this is a valid question. Out of curiosity, is anyone worried that it'll be another bust like Arena of the Planeswalkers? What do you guys think about that, Jason? Well, I think it took a bust of Arena of the Planeswalkers to realize that no one wanted to play Magic the Gathering with HeroScape. <laughs> and they were like, you know what? Let's just do HeroScape. I think that's what they wanted anyway. Oh, um, they probably also realized, and it's like, they looked on the forums, they were like, hey, everyone from HeroScape is just buying this for the figures and terrain, but they're not actually playing. Because I still, I have a bunch. I have never played Magic or Arena of the Planeswalkers. Why should I? Yeah. I just grabbed it all and said, all right, I'm going to make these Earth Elementals. I'm going to make those guys, those characters, and proxy, proxy, proxy. So they're like, ah, let's just give them the money. Let's give them the money to do the fourth expansion set. Um, yeah. 
Jason. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense to, right. to I, I, will it flop? No. no, it won't flop, but I don't know if it'll exceed more than the fourth master set. We still don't know how they're going to release this. Uh, I presume it's going to be online order, online order ordering only. Um, it could be by person, depending on if they're being painted or not. Um, the price might vary. They might have tiers. They might do the t a tier thing if they do a Kickstarter project. Um, but there's no websites to find this right. information. Nothing, yeah. We're this is all speculation. Yep. Um, right, which is fun. Yeah, but, this is all theory crafting right now. But if but if today, if Heroes Games coming back, and this is literally the way to do it, is to have a Kickstarter and have different tiers and be able to say, okay, who wants what, you know, and kind of like order by demand, <laughs> um, instead of mass right. producing it and just leaving all these stores with empty shelves uh, and only having only heroes left when everyone wanted all the commons anyway. Um, you know what I'm saying? So like to, to, to pay, to set up a store and say, okay, I want this individual character. I want this individual character and they're 3D printed individually because you can do that now. And then someone paints it and pay, you know, probably around the same prices that we pay for now. I can't imagine it being cheaper, right. um, uh, you know, and just pay by order. Um, essentially, if they just set up an official website to, to buy this stuff again. Um, it will sell. It will absolutely sell. Absolutely. Jason, what do you think? What they're almost certainly going to do, if you look like on YouTube where they drop this video, it's under the Hasbro Pulse channel. Hasbro right. Pulse is Hasbro's own branded Kickstarter type thing. Um, mm. That's what they did with Hero Quest. They basically launched a, it's a very much Kickstarter like, but Hasbro controls everything. It's on the Hasbro Pulse website. You can see it now. And they'll they'll set goals and say like you know when this reaches a million dollars we'll add this to the thing like Kickstarter and then you have the option to buy say in this case of Heroes Quest you have the option to buy the base game you have the option to buy the base game along with the two expansions that released at the time and then they've had the option to buy you know an additional hero if you wanted that stuff so they've got all the infrastructure for their website ready to go oh, yeah. I would expect oh, okay. to see oh, yeah, sure. Hero Escape on the Hasbro Pulse website in that type of format pretty soon and then yeah. based on how much money it raises they can figure out what's the best way to manufacture these miniatures right. um because oddly enough my friend has the new version of hero quest and i played it and the game has a bunch of little furniture pieces in it and they're the pulse version is actually manufactured with like resin furniture pieces which are kind of a weird thing to see in a mass market game um so it's probably what they did is they figured out how much money they had and instead of going with pure um, injection molded plastic for the terrain pieces that'd be expensive, they just did resin casting, which is a little bit of a cheaper option. Um, mm. So depending on how much money they raise for Heroescape, you may get pre-painted miniatures, you may not. You may get injection plastic molded, you may get 3D printed miniatures. Yeah, you're not really sure. All right, Jeremy? Yeah, so I just... I think I think of anything, right? We're we're in a new we're in a new era of information traveling. Like once again, I mentioned earlier. I think when we first got started, like everyone has a platform now, right? Like some people are on Twitter, some people are on Twitch, some people are on YouTube. You know, they're, they're, everybody has a voice on the space of the internet. And I want to say that the success of this series will, you know rely on the audience the fans talking about it making the conversation relevant in today's age bringing it up sharing it with their friends you know talking about this sufficiently enough to where it starts the trend and you know the the top top tiers of of hasbro if they can see that if they can see it trending they can see it as part of the, the conversation of of trending topics of something that people want to get into that's what's going to determine it's it's new it's new lifeline like this is this is now a time where everybody could say something about it because you know i i remember when heroescape first came out it was it had its own website and it's had its own series and stuff like that but it was still something not a lot of people had access to or people you now the conversation was started by word of mouth like i would tell my friends about it in person i would invite them to a game so they could play it and and then they got into it and then they started to buy it but that was just me and my friends right small small group we now have access to you know 
hundreds of people and and it's like this is what we need to do if you want hero escape to continue if you want the series to continue talk about it talk about it on your social media talk about it on your on with your friends talk about it wherever you see it wherever that opportunity arises and i can guarantee you if that gets that topic to become something that is relevant of a, a trending topic it that's what hasbro needs to see and it's like like and to kind of like use an example uh, with Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO, that that was a niche topic. Not a lot of people played this game, but now it's a more popular topic because so many people talk about it on their social medias to the point where it does have trending moments where their hashtags for that game is trending and larger figureheads are getting into it, right? Who knows? Who knows what is possible now in the age of information? Who knows what's possible now with everyone having a platform? talk about this game as soon as it comes out talk about as much as you can and i guarantee you that's that's where it's going to be it's going to rely on how much this conversation continues into the future and then from there you know who knows who knows what to expect so. and, and yeah and I, no, well I, told I, absolutely and i think they are relying heavily well not heavily on that but i think that's one of the, one of one of their uh, bullets in their gun so to speak um that that they're hoping is what's going to happen uh, for this and and I, I would say, um, to answer this question too, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a saying um, from a wise old sage back in the day: "Do or do not. There is no try." <laughs> Arena of the Planeswalkers. Even though I don't know much about it, it was a try. Oh, that was a try. It was a try. This right. is doing this, and and from I'm quoting from another commentator um, on YouTube respect the source material and and while that was being applied for film this it's the same thing respect what was originally done what originally worked what people originally loved and mm -hmm. since we already had we have the one of the original creators of the game one of um and people within the community you know for sure that they're giving as much respect to what was originally done in the first place and so, yeah, we, I mean, we, we absolutely put our trust in them. Now, we're getting into some theorizing for this next. Uh, Gim Gimply the Giant uh, was kind of saying, you've got to share your theories behind the title, Age of Annihilation. So what are our thoughts about that title? And what would that, what do we think that signifies? We already covered, we talked about it a little bit, but um, let's talk a little bit more. Jason, uh, what, do you, what do you think about that? It definitely has the vibes of a giant battle, end of the world type thing coming on. Um, so you're, you're probably going to see the storyline jump a little bit ahead. It's probably going to tie into, you know, what you're talking about, how the previous series ended. But it's going to be, everything's kind of broken down, as you guys have been mentioning. And, and there may be, like, kind of weird alliances going on. It's possible that maybe the existing generals are gone or dead, or one or more of them is out of the story. And you've got, like, a broken down factions it's going to be that kind of a very a bit of a dark theme the story absolutely jeremy so if we you know the main thing is to remember that hero escape and like the general design thread or idea behind hero escape has always been norse mythology right and one of the biggest biggest themes of norse mythology and one that usually gets referenced a lot when norse mythology is used as material is ragnarok right the twilight of the gods so mm -hmm. you know the story of norse mythology always has this grand epic battle that determines the fate of the universe determines the fate of the world and hearing the term age of annihilation that's what it's giving me it's they're giving me the ragnarok vibes it's giving me the the idea of this epic battle that will conclude and essentially not concluding hero escape itself but concluding the results of Uker summoning, you know, how he, he just, he had no, you know, idea. Like the people he kept summoning, you can track throughout the history of the game. They all had their own motivations. They all had and their agendas. own agendas. They, they, didn't, they didn't want to work for him. They worked for him for convenience. Mm -hmm. This sounds like the end result. This is the result of that unchecked summoning, that, that, that sense of irresponsibility in on his part to rein in the characters that he decided to uh, put to war put to fighting like this is going to be that result of 
just come everyone's agenda is all coming together in this you know fruition and once again you know possibly culminate in some form of ragnarok where s something bad is going to happen finally as a result of everybody's agendas you know whatever they put into play you know with kimoshi taking over people's minds and with the vampire lord doing his own thing and with you know the, all the stuff right everybody's just going to be like all right time to hit each other <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I mean, there's probably going to be you know some kind of storytelling within within ukar of all the factions kind of you know all the their spa species just inter fighting with each other he can't have full control of everybody anymore um and just to reiterate what you were saying earlier um about how valkyrie we ended we ended the story with valkyrie trying to summon uh beasts and stuff in a in a cave or you were saying something about that um because i have a gentleman in my, in my chat right now um uh, theorizing about that and mm -hmm. one he says I, I hope that we finally get figures of the generals which might be interesting really cool. for the future um but i don't think we'll be getting that now i don't think anything that we That's, see here yeah. are would be generals well, of the faction for it. i mm -hmm. mean maybe um i don't know if the generals should ever be in battle that's the whole idea um that they're always in behind the scene. We're playing as the generals, essentially, um, within the game. But I really like the fact to, to, to reiterate what, what Jeremy was saying with Valkyrie being the focus, as well as uh, Aquila um, being the focus for this master set. Um, because a lot of these creatures that we're seeing um, between the trailer and the image from Gen Con um, do not look, I mean, they could be associated with Ukar, but I don't think they are. Um, I definitely see Vidar vibes, Aquila vibes, um, uh, 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 what was the other one? Um, what am I missing? Aquila vibes, Vidar, and I, no, not I know. I don't see anything I know related because even that cowboy down there, it looks like he has got green skin. Now, I don't know I, if that's I know true or not. Vidar, mm -hmm. Vidar, Vidar, Aquila, and, um, I'm, I'm missing Valkyrie. That that's the one I was missing. Um, so you know, you know, you're seeing all these different beasts and creatures, and I'm really assume, assuming because it's also what we lackluster, um, you know, within the collections. Um, there's not a lot of those, so I presume that that's what we'd be getting here. This is the expansion to revitalize and bring in a lot more of those factions and fill in all the gaps. Um, you know, and I also feel like that's a great way to kind of bring in that, you know, annihilation and, and destruction um, and probably not, maybe not end a story, maybe leave some kind of cliffhanger, but kind of like, here's the end cap of the story we started 20, 10, 12 years ago. You know, here's the final master set. Not to say that they were able to say that it's the final one, but to say to our, the audience that has been there for this entire time, Here's something for you guys. Here's this a is recap, a gift to yeah. you. Um, you know, here's here's the end of the story for now. Um, let's just hope that it goes any further than this. Um, but the fact that we're getting this at all now is like mind boggling. Yeah. And I'm like, why sure. now? Uh, in my head. Um, so I guess I guess for them it is the right time. Um, any but time yeah. is the right time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, for. Me, Why it now? It's because this raked in, I believe, seven figure income for Hasbro. There you go. Really? There you go. <laughs> really? That did that well, huh? I'm oh. pretty sure it's somewhere north of $1 million. I'm just going to figure I'll confirm that, though. Hold on. That's, wow. that's phenomenal. Yeah, Age of Annihilation. I... Yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, because I'm not too familiar with your request, um, other than, you know, passing by. Um, because, I, I mean, on, on their Avalon, um, Avalon Hills, um, the only game, other game I've played from their list is Risk Legacy. I've played Risk Legacy, um, and that that's a fantastic game. I played um, Betrayal House or House on the Hill Betrayal. That was a good is one. That, is that like a? Um, uh, it says cooperative board game, but is there? Is it kind of like a, like Among Us? We have to find out who's the the crim, who's the murderer. Or? It kind of it's it's an interesting like so yeah. There's like you know someone died, and so everyone has to figure out who did it, and then you kind of figure out who's like the the murderer then you have the people who are murdering and you you build the map based on like progress and stuff like that. Like you start off with a few rooms 
and then you add on to those rooms it's it's a really cool concept uh it, i did play it a while ago so i couldn't like give you all the rules off the top of my head you no know, just a basic synopsis so, okay. yeah it's it's a really nice like uh kind of like a it's, it's got clue vibes but it's definitely got more to it in terms of like randomness and stuff i remember the character i played died like really quickly <laughs> oh wow so, okay yeah, i ended up i ended up my character ended up getting murdered as a result of the of the game's uh circumstances and like that changes every time you play it so it's it's really cool uh, the idea behind it um, interesting now yeah. now jason hopefully you can answer me what is the simplest way to explain hero quest hero quest is probably one of the first really popular dungeon call games so if you think of like modern day um descent is like a okay. precursor to that um any of those kind of things we move around a dungeon you explore rooms and fight monsters and that one is also tied into the warhammer fantasy universe so that's actually got games workshop branding as well as oh Warhammer, wow which eventually became um hasbro or Bob. oh wow but it, um it's the hero quest pre-order hasbro pledge system they have it raised 3.7 million dollars wow amazing so there's basically with with hero escape all they they spent some amount of money to get those miniatures cranked out. That you know, you know, you get what they have like nine new miniatures in that picture, and you know that's not super expensive to get those made and prototypes printed up and painted. And they could be looking at a large payday, and that's probably why they're doing it now. Mm -hmm. money, money, and money, if money, it doesn't that's do very Take well, they'll they'll set like a, you know like with Hero Quest, they had like a million dollar funding goal that had to, it had to hit that in order to produce the game. And they could, they could do something similar with Euroscape, where maybe they put like 250,000, 500,000, and if it doesn't make it, it doesn't get produced. It's like if a Kickstarter or some type of Kickstarter thing releases like this week, who is in this week for that? I'm, I gotta oh, do I'm some, but I'm, I gotta do some budgeting, but we'll, I'm definitely gonna put some down. Oh, I don't care. They they could they, they, they could start broke. taking stuff away from me. That the, the heroes they can't take Euroscape away from me though. I, w I want to say too. I mean, my thoughts on Age of Annihilation. What exactly is being annihilated here? Is it a faction? Is it just a number of people within factions? Is it the Wellsprings? That is a question. What does annihilation mm -hmm. mean exactly? Uh, but anyway, okay. Continuing the comments because we got a ton. Uh, let's see. Arable says, "I don't think the map we see in the trailer is the master set." No, no. Obviously not. Uh, that would be an insane amount of terrain pieces. Yes, it would. I know, because I've built sets like that already for TOV. And yes. And he knows. He yes. Gets it. <laughs> and yes, it's oh, it's insane to build. It's It, it costs a lot and still looks lovely. Um, and Sierra, uh, Arable says, what I would expect that the pieces we get will be closer to the ones we had on the magic sets. Um, so one base color of plastic, not brown with paint or sand, rock, and grass. Um, or with paint for sand, rock, and grass. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're going to be as simple as possible for things that need to be simple for. Um, for but if it's a master set, um, I just hope they, they have they implement some type of like new terrain piece. Just, just not just for the aesthetics, but um, to, to something to enhance the game. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And, and obviously, I mean, a theory for me, I mean, I, they already have, you know, dungeon and they, I would like to see an inclusion of dungeon of some sort. Um, either it's like a little bit more, some more three tiles, maybe a couple two tiles or something. Um, but, you know, also I'd love to see like a, you know, something with an effect. Um, I had stated earlier um, about like some kind of decayed tile. Um, something that kind of like if you step on this you get like you know you know a defect so like you can step on it but you know for example maybe if you step on it you you lose a, a defense uh die um you know instead of losing an attack or something you just lose a defense die when when on it um so i think that'd be really cool to see um you know with with within but i mean color wise we got greens we got yellows we got uh grays for rock um we got light right light grays and dark grays and blacks for asphalt um uh concrete and dungeon 
Um, we got blues for water, green for swamp. Now, what other color is there? I, ha I have <laughs> a question though, and this this is kind of like a question for because well here um, I um I'm first I'm gonna mention this comment from Dave uh, Conklin here um saying uh, there's a what does BGG post mean? There's a BGG post. Uh, board, board game, game geek. geek. Board game geek. Okay. Yeah. Uh, saying emphasis will be on creating new members of the Hero Escape family. We see lots of brand new original designs and factions, as opposed to rehashing or expanding existing design space. I'm not saying no. I'm just talking about emphasis. Um, so now to create mem new members of the Hero Escape family, if people want to get the Hero Escape, they they see this master set being released and be like, oh, I want to start doing this. I missed out 20 years, like 20 some years ago, almost um, this, and I want to, I want to, I want to take it up again. But what about the stuff that was released 15 years ago? Um, do do we think there's going to be maybe um, a a a redoing of the original master sets on the market because? The, the OG master sets, like like um, the jungle sets, the lava sets, the ice you know terrain sets that are out there, not in circulation, but are being like kind of sold uh, via auctions or eBay and stuff. They are expensive, horribly expensive. Um, do you think they are going to re-release? Um, maybe not the same, make it a little bit different, but but end up releasing more cost-effective ways. Uh, for these terrains to be put into people's hands and not have to pay like thousands of dollars to do it. What, what are you guys' thoughts? Uh, Jason, go ahead. Go ahead. I think they're going to have to if they want the game to succeed. Right. Mm -hmm. um, especially, I don't know if they would plan to have a formal tournament scene going on. Like that's obviously a very popular thing for many miniatures games. Um, they would have to find a way to either include all the old stuff in a fair way or make it very difficult for them to be used in a tournament setting as well if your kids are in that type of environment. Um, Jeremy? Um, yeah, uh, honestly, going off of that same concept, if they want the game to succeed, they, they got to go back to the roots and a lot of people you know, didn't get a chance to play back in 2004 uh, when it first came out, and then you know when they tried to they tried to bring it back and republishing like Maladon's Prophecy was one of the sets I remember they reprinted uh, right before the discontinuation. That those as long as you know their initial releases go properly and they're able to to get this initial release out there and and they make what they're looking for in terms of the income, I could see them doing their best to try to get the older sets back into circulation. Like for example, you know, a good really a big example of course is like Tikala Jungle. Like that set came out in 2009 and then it discontinued in 2010. How many people actually got a chance to get the jungle set before it became like super expensive? There's a lot of people that missed out on that. And if you try to build an army based on the Predator Synergy with the Wyvern or with Sujoa, if you're trying to get the spider concept going you really can't do that trying to get enough spiders to actually play a proper army is really difficult unless you have a you know a good bit of extra money on hand so wanting to curb the issues in that regard i think would be a good step forward because then it ties the veterans of the game the the individuals who have been playing for as long as they have with the newer players right it gives a chance for newer players to get involved with the older sets and it gives the older players a chance to get what they weren't able to get back in the day. And that's that's a that's a huge marketing opportunity. I mean, I'm pretty sure you it's can make a, a good make bit of money from yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good way to make money. They want the money and keep the right. keep that series going that they're they, you know, the money that they're looking to get from the series do that by bringing back what we want. Like the sets that we didn't get a chance to get when it first came out, do that. That would be awesome. Like to call a jungle, Aquila's Aquila's Alliance, like get those sets back so we right. can get them now. Uh, and have give it a couple years of circulation before you cancel the sets, you know, before the sets got canceled. So, and then be on eBay all it over was... again. <laughs> and, then, and then they go back on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> From a business model perspective, the secondary market does not benefit a game company at all. Right. Despite the fact that right. they sell a lot of old Warhammer stuff and make decent money doing it, um, that's kind of income is what Hasbro wants. So if they can find right. a way to either 
basically crash the secondary market and replace it with something <laughs> better or somehow make it obsolete it's in their financial best interest to do so right right that makes sense joe i mean i'm looking i'm looking at all things here escape right now um i had a guy in the chat say something about won't someone please think of all things here escape and i know a lot of people within the community aren't a huge fan of this site Overpressed. mostly because of it being very uncost effective you know it's, it's just cause they're expensive i get it um and i i really don't know how much money they paid for the lot that they did and maybe they have a huge long way of trying to pay for it back i don't know um you know without the box the se i would go for the second edition more than the first edition um of rise of, I mean, no, you actually want the the first edition because of the better water, uh, water tiles. Um, oh, and we're man. looking at uh, water. on sale for one hundred and fifty two dollars and ninety six cents. That's triple the original price. Um, and and yeah, I know it's twelve years old. It's it's a long time. I get it. Um, you know, and but that to me, to me, for what you get in that package to me is still worth it. I think it's still worth that price. Oh, yeah. um, you know, and I, I know it's it's a tough, tough pill to swallow from $50 12 years ago um, till now, but because of how money works, um, to me, that makes right sense. Price, yeah. um, you know, and, and it kind of sucks that the quality kind of deteriorated, especially mostly with the the water tiles not looking as as fun as they are um and just became a generic blue uh over time um but you know even so i mean looking at these they're not in cr crazy amount other than i think the um swarm of the morrow which is at on sale for 314 dollars which <laughs> that is a that's robbery <laughs> that's absolute robbery there was enough sets around to get that um but that's with the box that's with the box without the box um you're looking at 180 bucks or 179.96 it's probably um, that which, like one of the first release kind of things like when they first came out and that yeah. individuals hold, held on to it for that new, long new and, new and the so. boxes are going to be a lot more valuable yeah and so if you're if you're if you're a father gonna buy this stuff for your kids i think paying you know close to i know i hate to say it 300 dollars for getting the first master set and the second master set um is a pretty good start um and yeah and this guy's saying in the chat now it is still cheaper than warhammer it truly is I, it, I mean, you you're getting work because already painted it's already painted terrain, you don't have to there. worry about uh you know getting other terrain th it comes with all the stuff that you need to do to play the game um so you know i mean i'm gonna reference you stark p stark 1988 thank you um for bringing that up and yeah so it's it's, it's expensive but it could be much worse um but then again, there are there are single figures on here that are like fifty dollars, and I'm like, that's not really that worth it. Um, so that's that's a whole different can of worms. But to as master sets go, um, it, it's not it's not bad. It could be worse. Right. And I want to mention something. Uh, Zorloff, um, when talking about Sam, we were talking about Sam your bra brown a minute ago and i asked a question about oh does that mean it's going to be in future sets um and zorloff i mean i do want to apologize half a second and say this is just my questioning brain i'm not half i'm not serious about like a lot of what what i'm saying there but he, he does say i didn't say anything about any future release of, of that miniature i'm like I, I understand understand um that was just me going like my my interviewing mind uh just asked those questions so uh, <laughs> uh take no heed um See here, uh, Gotex uh, says, I had just got some of my friends into it a couple weeks ago. Great timing. Yeah, really. What a great time to actually discover this now. Um, uh, Ghibli the Giant says, I wonder when the release date will be. Guess as good as mine. Um, I'm saying, I'm my first guess, I'm thinking Christmas. I'm thinking they want, maybe. you know, a release date for that. But then again, we don't know how they're they're how they're going to package how this stuff. How far in development mm -hmm. is it? Uh, I will That too. Yeah. That too. If you want to take 
take bets on when it's going to be released and whoever gets the closest Let's take wins. bets this is this is this is already take bets. This, is, this is already going Rack to be on the heroes internet. keep racketeering on, on, let's the, go on the internet <laughs> <they're> recorded, <laughs> so <laughs> they're <laughs> waiting <laughs> with our actually they're putting wages down. We'll give you this miniature if I win, you know. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll start, I already uh, have two cherishes. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I'll, I'll, go, I'll go first. Oops. Light blinked. Oh, boy. Okay. Hopefully that's not the power going out. But I'll go first. Um, my prediction, and this is a little far out, but this is my prediction, um, just based on what I see, which isn't much right now. My guess um, that release, probably not until, like, next early summertime next year not that mm -hmm. joe what do you think um hmm i i'm gonna say i'm gonna say early 2024 i'm giving it a little bit a little bit more time mm -hmm. um at least at least i should say or i should reference to us having it in our hands um at least uh, i mean that's that's a little bit not look we're almost done with this year which is nuts um oh, time is flying my gosh. so to to say to say that we have an entire year to get more information and to then pre-orders or kickstarting um however they however hasbro pulse works this uh formula um i'm gonna say probably might probably early 2024 we're gonna probably get our hands on this okay. jeremy i i'm trying to remember like back in the day whenever they announce a, a an expansion or a set at gen con like what was the general rate of release from that time period because i know they they tended they would announce it and then there was like that wait period where they would they would reveal it on heroescapers.com like post versus post or like you would re be refreshing the main site until it popped up and because they're announcing it now because they're announcing it in gen con i i'm optimistic for a christmas release uh i wouldn't be too upset if it came out during early 2023 mm -hmm. but like that's the thing it's like i don't think they would have announced it unless they were already like working towards a release date of sorts so yeah my i want i want to stick to Chris, a christmas release because it seems to be the best time especially for something like this i mean it's perfect how how else what, what what's the easiest way to 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 get it a, a hero like scaper christmas. yeah right yeah, yeah like what, what's the easiest easiest thing to get a hero scaper for christmas new hero scape i mean that their sales would ex like explode exponentially if they released it during a time that people are already giving gifts anyway so it's like you just everyone's gonna buy heroes for each other <laughs> it's just <laughs> but um yeah, yeah i i i, I want to go back and try to see you know how that worked out because i know for a fact whenever gen con had an announcement within a like i want to say three to five months after that announcement was when those sets would go go live and then you could get them at walmart you could get them at target wherever so you know who who knows i mean like i said it's been 12 years so who knows if the formula has changed who's in charge of it who's yeah, behind it that sort of stuff lots of things lots of changes yeah so jason i am gonna say the hasbro pulse campaign will begin in september of 2022 with an expected delivery date of christmas season 2023 and on top of that you're not going to find this game in big box stores and probably not even game stores it's going to be a hasbro exclusive online unless it does really really well and that might be the case yeah um that right process, that this is on pulse yeah. yeah the the reason the main reason for that is just um when you go through game stores, Hasbro gets a tiny fraction of what they would get if they sell it to you directly. So they potentially mm. can lose a little bit of a profit by going selling directly to Hasbro online. You get a much better, basic deal um, because Hasbro keeps a lot more of the revenue than when they try to go through a game store. Yeah, very true. Yeah, you know. and it's a lot. It's, it's a big difference if you're familiar with any of the contracts out there. Right. It's a very big difference. For sure. Now, Zorloff says something else here, too. Um, says, I feel for you. Um, I'd be tearing out my hair, uh, wondering what's going to happen if I didn't know. On the other hand, I've been tearing my hair out 
not being able to say anything. I mean, there's a little little wink there, thank you. Mm -hmm. so, but, Zoya, we do thank you for commenting on the stream, though, coming on the stream, and telling us that you can't say anything, because that says something. So It's yeah. true. Yeah, happy, it's true. It, it, just, every happy, little yeah. helps. Yes. Yeah, and <laughs> anything we can grab onto, even if it's nothing, we're going to grab onto it. Um, let's see here. What else, what else comes to here? Okay. Uh... Arable says, I wonder if content that was never released, like Aquila stuff we know about, will make it now? Possibly. Possibly. Like what? What what do we already know about Aquila that isn't out yet? <laughs> well, different. Well, because he's probably spiders. talking about the plans. Yeah. Like prior to the idea of it being discontinued, they probably had like an entire lineup that they never got to use. Right. So that's well, probably yeah, what No, no, probably. To. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. they have a lot of things backlogged. Yeah. Because there's a there's a huge gap missing within that collection. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean having more Aquila, Valkyrie, um, you know, it would be amazing. Um, and I think this is what Age of Annihilation is. Um, yep. I really love Jeremy's theory about how this is Valkyrie's time to summon monsters, and this is awesome. the big big off nuke thing that that, that awesome. in the middle here, um, the big dragon thing is the big old nuke. Um, so. Uh, can I just say though, because um, I don't know if we'll ever get to this, and I, I'll, I'll do something about it. But I just want to say, um, if this thing doesn't have an like an like an easy auto kill or or like eight attack dice, oh, the, um, the, the I, big guy I, right here, bro, bro, <laughs> like what do we do? Like this thing's the biggest thing I've ever seen come out of oh Hero my Escape. Gosh, I can't. And see if this thing doesn't hit, smack like a big old nuke i i, I, I give up i can't wait to see the stat card for this thing yeah oh yeah absolutely the stat cards like i want to see really awesome creative ways um maybe with order markers or maybe using pips um to charge up abilities i mean there's a guy over here that looks like he throws a giant knife so mm -hmm. I, I would love to see like a range four Chain or something yeah, a little bit there. um yep. Yep. that kind of like maybe or and that he, they, it's range four but he can like swing it around him so he can attack oh. everybody within a range of four. Oh, yeah. i don't know speak that would be me. dope speak, um speak more naughty things to me joe speak more naughty yeah things. i mean there's a there's a ninja assassin character that looks like an android might be vidar um she's got a pistol and looks like it got a dagger so it'd be cool if she had a um uh what is the uh the, the the she can walk through people enemies what is that called um well, like oh, ghost walk phantom, or walk. Something? Phantom, phantom walk. walk yeah she probably got like a phantom walk she can probably have this cool little slice attack and range of five or something um I, I, there's a there's that tentacle monster back there that hopefully can is a like a phantom knight and kind of just it flies and it um I don't know, tail whips you? I, I mm. What is like what is this like guy golem guy with this giant hammer that attaches to his back? Is that electrified? Is that a vacuum is that, cleaner? Is that, is that a huge vacuum cleaner? I no, know. it's none of that well That'd be like a mace of some sort. No, don't yeah, well don't yeah, it's probably like a mace. Maybe it shoots sure poison? That, that like what what's attached to his cleaner, back? I go, aha. <laughs> um I uh, there's there's two other smaller guys on opposite ends with hammers um are they related at all you know <laughs> species wise um i better see a four attack you know literally like a quadruple attack like straight up not double attack or triple quadruple attack you can just attack four times see. um I, no questions asked mm -hmm. I, got, I gotta really catch up on these comments here uh, uh just two questions two Statements from uh, Mega Man Donner and Gimli Giant Betrayal in the house on the hill was a goat. Um, and Betrayal is more like Clue on steroids. Well, thank you for thank you for those comments. Um, Zorloff says, uh, and probably said this a little while ago, gotta run by guys, fun times ahead. Yes, fun times ahead. Thank you, Zorloff. I know you're not listening to this Bye. now, but hopefully you listen to this later. Thank you so much for coming on board, for giving us some comments. Awesome. Um... Let's see your elbow. It says, uh, I think all things HeroScape is good and bad. For me, a European, it was a nice way to get stuff that was just never sold here, even for more. What it's like is the huge increase in price over the years. Yeah, yeah, all of us. I compared the orders I did around four years ago with today's prices day in the store and increased over 50%. Yeah. Now, this is a question for 
Um, for world market, not just for the United States, because all of us are here based in the United States, and I think Hasbro is probably targeting the United States more. But what are our thoughts for world market, especially like Europe and such? Is Hasbro, do you think, is going to target that? That's a question they actually ask. I wonder if that's one that they can answer. If they be targeting no. the European. No, I don't think they can answer anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's a tough one because Warhammer is having that issue. Um, you know, people are making 3D models on their own. I mean, you can scan objects with your phone and make a 3D model out of them now. Um, there's an app called Polycam I've been doing research on, um, and we can make 3D renders um, of these models and put them on the computer. And why not stop there? And of course, you could use them for you know your videos or video games or whatever. Uh, put them in the virtu virtual escape somehow. I, I don't know. That would be cool. Um, but like to also then use them as 3D printing. So. You know, people can already now are looking into or people are selling 3D models of current scape um, that you can just paint yourself. Um, so even with this, I mean, I don't think there's any way for them to tackle and stop that because people are making careers um, and businesses off of that, which I'm sure there's some kind of legal thing with it, but I'm not an expert on anything like that. So I can't really say too much. Um, I don't want to see that happen, but it's it is scary to see if they will ever will tackle that issue. Um, will that be an issue with for them? Um, I, I, I can't I can't imagine it um, right now. I think people are just way too excited and and just want this want to see what they have in store here. Um, so. I can tell you right now, the topic of like 3D printing and Warhammer, uh, Games Workshop just released their annual report, and they raked in a crap ton of money again. So, mm. 3D printing, like basically bootleg Warhammer, is not affecting their bottom line. They're, they're hey, there you go. Answer solved. Revenue again. So, <laughs> currently, the number of people who are doing that for them is so small, it's irrelevant to their bottom line, and they don't even care. Um, they do go after people, though. I mean, if you actually were to make a exact copy of a Warhammer miniature, they will come after you. But you can make your own generic, you know, Roman space knight that looks very similar to a space marine, and they can't do anything about it. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> that's that side of things. And I have a comment uh, here oh, through Facebook, actually. Um, my <laughs> one of my wife, wife's best friends, Marion. She makes a prediction release in November. And hey, if anybody else has any predictions too, I mean, we're not the only ones who could be part of this pool, about this guessing pool when this when this game's going to release. Anybody out there listening, if you want to leave a comment what your guess is, um, we can have it, that guess set in stone and we'll see what happens. Uh, you'll win, uh, let's say you'll win a huge applause. <laughs> so I actually... Um... I just I, I'm on the Pulse website right now, looking at some of the stuff. Uh, one of the one of the things I noticed. So so if you look really closely at the HeroScape, the picture, right, the Gen Con photo, uh, at the very bottom portion of it, there's you can see the box, the Yawning Portal, and uh, so that is a board game that oh, yeah. is slated to be released March 2023. You can pre-order it now but it doesn't come out until March 2023. So I'm thinking that might be similar to how Heroescape is going to work out. Like they're going to be putting it on the website now and we can pre-order it and it won't be out till next year. That's what I'm, 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 I'm adjusting my, my thought process here based on what I'm seeing. Cause, cause yeah, no, Yawning Portal, it's in the photo and it doesn't say it won't be, it won't be March. So I'm wondering if that's a similar thing. Um, I just got a no I just got noted here uh, 35 minutes long two minutes ago um, Sir Heroescape himself just dropped a video uh, with an interview with Dadscaper. Oh Shoot So we'll that That's something that we might have to start watching either on stream Or <laughs> like soon that for take, news. That would take all night. That would literally take all night. I might have to stream that like later <laughs> Right now. So. Gimply the Giant says release holiday 2023. I'll say November uh, 2023. So November next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm just scrolling through this. I don't see any images. 
I don't know if he got anything. I don't think he got anything new out of this. Probably, but probably maybe, not. Information. Maybe, maybe information. Maybe information. Yeah, I mean, if there's anyone, if there's anyone in this community that would get the new image early, you know, release, it would be Sir Hero Escape. So. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure, he's he's involved in a lot of that. Yeah. But yeah, um, I see. I see what you're talking about with there Hasbro is, Pulse yeah. and the Yawning Portal. Um, so yeah, probably once once they Ugh. once they go through uh, that process, they'll they'll put that on, put this on the website for us to pre-order. The hype is so real right now. But yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. I can't imagine like daily now. We're just gonna get one card a day or something. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so. so like that's that could how, go on for three weeks. That's what they did for the older characters. So back in like I, I remember, especially when they when they transitioned the set and you know, when Hasbro gave the publishing rights to Wizards of the Coast, uh, Truth was releasing a post every week, right? And so every week he would release like one of the units or a couple of the units. And that went on for a few months until the official release of the entire set. But they would like go over the design. They would talk about the some of the you know trivia behind the character design, like what inspired the design, like what they were planning with it, and why they brought it into existence. And there's like there's entire you know there's a uh, you can check it out on the HeroScapers.com website right now. There's like the history of these units as they were being released. There was like a release like a, a spoiler reveal every week. So with this like i you know we're probably going to get the base info tomorrow when during gen con comes live and then from there they're going to probably going to be like okay here's you know this one unit and they're going to reveal it each week one unit or something to that effect so on the hero skeppers website it's gonna be like kind of like trickling the information yeah they, they trickled once. it before the, like back in the day it was trickled info so i think that's the way they're going to do it again is like here's the here's the picture of the unit here's the picture of the card and some some inspiration behind the unit and then that's that's all we get we get the theory craft for for months on end <laughs> as 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 the the old the old uh, the ways the old ways dictate <laughs> what, what do you think jason so. do you think you think it's going to be like that type of like just a little bit of information at a time or an all at once type thing what do you think they can go either way i'm not i honestly don't really know um I would almost think they want to capitalize right now on the excitement of the community and get all everyone here to basically throw them a bunch of cash mm -hmm. and then <laughs> maybe after that kind of spread out to a larger audience because they've got a bunch of people right now doing the, the the meme of shut up and take my money right now yeah. and they really oh, yeah. cash sure. in on that yeah before Seriously. you they show too much because they show if they show too much and they kind of are going in the wrong direction they're going to lose potential customers in the hero Escape community that's uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I will say, um, uh, Irable here uh, said that within that um, interview, there is a timeline, um, not of release date things, but of history. So, Jeremy, listen up. Um, so, there's a there's a chart here talking about the HeroScape history and talking about the ages. So there was the Stone Age between, for I guess the release date of Rise of the Valkyrie. So that was the Stone Age. Um, right. Then there was the D and D Age. Right. Then uh, the Dark Age, which uh, when I guess it was discontinued. Right. Um, and then Age of Enlightenment, which was when the community um, pulled together and uh, continued with the C three V S O V. That's cool. And now we have the Age of Annihilation. Which is a reborn uh, of an in a new age. That's what that's what the kind of the notes, the spark notes of what um, they have here on a what looks like a PowerPoint presentation. That sounds um, interesting. And yeah. the crazy thing, the crazy thing is, is that like once again that follows the traditional Norse mythology format because right. Ragnarok was seen as not only a destruction of everything of the current known setting of the universe, but it was a refresh, like once the gods finished their battle the you know ask and embla the the humans that were set aside uh by odin himself 
like these humans would rise in and start the new age. So like this follows Norse mythology to the T, <laughs> even if it's just based on the community experience. And that's that's just that's mind blowing. That's super cool that they're doing You're that. You're telling me that they plan to be discontinued, I, be gone I, I, for I, so I, long. You know what? Like if they take just I would to make it, it right. <laughs> just, okay. But that, that would be insane. That's, that's some that way to do it. Insane. Sure. That would be absolutely nuts if that was the case. You'd have to count on the community actually pulling together and not ignoring the game, you know? Or, yeah, I, yeah, we all planned this this way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Zero Escape is a relative anomaly in terms of the fact the game oh carried on as its own independent uh, 12 years, yeah. Published this for 12 years. Yeah. yeah. Not absolutely. many games do that. I think Very no, few. there ain't no game like this one. That, that doesn't no. have discontinued <laughs> for like 12 years and still ongoing that has a community that has. I don't think there's any game. Uh, you can hold me to that. Um, I mean, challenge me on that if, if there is something out there, but I don't think there's anything out there like this. Warhammer no, there's Fantasy no other game that sells tiles yet? and figures and cards and you battle them and like, I don't, there's nothing like that. Well, Painted! Jason was mentioning mm -hmm. like Warhammer. Yeah, Warhammer Fantasy Battles is still kind of hanging on as they, they've they kind of forked off in a couple um, community-maintained editions, but they're still very similar to what the game was about... Uh, it may have been seven years since they blew up the world and replaced the Age of Sigmar, so... Okay. It's still kind of clinging on there. But that's not exactly a game that's discontinued, right? It's still... It is, yes. Oh, it is long, It's long gone. Okay. Right. Age of Sigmar is a very different game than Warhammer Fantasy Battles was. Right. Okay. Interesting. All right. So that's close. Not exactly. It's close. close and it's not but then again, years. those are those are the, literally the two anomalies. There's right. just a, a pile of just dead games right. that are just long gone that no one cares about. Wasteland. Annihilated. So, so the fact that there's only only two that survive and they're two of the biggest games basically in the miniature world ever is is they're they're anomalies. <laughs> mm. It's a great it's, it's a great, great time to be uh, around, a great time to be alive to, to experience this stuff. Mm -hmm. And well, let's see here. Okay, I'm looking at the clock. We are two hours into this conversing. I don't know much more we want to converse. Probably not too much longer. I'm probably gonna break and then. Oh heck, I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna continue with the live stream and just edit or just call it a night. I think I might call it a night. I'm not sure. Um, or I might. I might have final thoughts at the end and let you guys go. But one thing I do want to mention too that's kind of related. But one thing I noticed and one thing that Jeremy pointed out to me earlier today is. Uh, EscapeCon 3 mm -hmm. has already been announced for next year, and so I just want to give a, a quick shout out to that. I'm not going to read all the information. If you want to go to uh, HeroScapers.com uh, and, so and go to events um, announcing EscapeCon 3, um, it's going to be same place, um, August 9th through the 13th. And they already have a bunch of things about, about sign-up dates, which will happen soon for, for some of us. So, um, they're, they're arranging things just a tad bit differently. Um, so go on go on HeroScapers.com, find out information on that, because it, it, you really do have to go to HeroScapers.com to get that event information. There's really nowhere else you can go. Um, but yeah, I mean, ScapeCon 2 was such a blast. And so... Oh, it's so fun. And, so, and just the fact that now this game is coming out um how that's going to affect escape con 3 as an event uh, it's it's going to be it's, it's just going to be a fun like year and a half two years uh, for this insanely fun insanely fun and arable says escape con the event where they gave out the agent shotgun master shin Wu no um escape con is is something that's uh, completely different from any other convention it's 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 a time, and it's only happened twice, uh, last year and then this year, to where you had a bu bunch of HeroScapers organize um, an, an event that lasts like half, lasts a half a week, and to where we do uh, we do nothing but play HeroScape tournaments, just he playing HeroScape games. Your mind gets blown. Um, you tend to lose your mind a little bit when when you're when you're playing mm. like uh, uh, like fourteen to twenty four games over the course of a week. Um, but it's an absolute blast. You get you get to see some of the community, talk, converse with the community. And I mean, I went to ScapeCon, Joe went to ScapeCon, Jeremy went to ScapeCon, 
and it was certainly worth it uh, going there. Mm. So um, let's see here. Um, and so it's it's definitely and there are things that they do give away some nice nice little items, but uh, not the master, not Shakon, unfortunately. Um, you still have to hunt for those online. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so. So yeah, so I just wanted to announce that. Uh, any any final thoughts about SkateCon and about uh, just this big news event today, guys? Before we uh, before before I sign off or before I break and then sign off or sign you guys off. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Jason, please. Well, I think I've probably said enough things about what I think about this hero escape mm -hmm. thing. So I'm pretty good with the final thoughts. Um, so I guess I'll just, once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. You can find me on YouTube under Rocker Robotics, and also my space combat miniatures game, Legends of Keladasia, is over at EmpireUnderSiege.com. And I guarantee you, Jason's probably going to be talking about this, doing a video or two about this, about your escape in the next, you know, who, know, who knows when, but I'm sure he's going to probably going to do videos on this sometime, as, as we all. Um, Jeremy, final thoughts. All right. So, I, I will say, like, ScapeCon reinvigorated my desire to, you know, get back into content creation. I, I, took, a, I took a few months break from my, my own channel, I uh, needed to get some life stuff in order. And, and yeah, so being able to go to ScapeCon and, and just seeing this game that I was so passionate about, it's still alive, it's still thriving, it's still, it's still the community's massive, right? Like, that was awesome. That gave me a lot of energy. I've gotten some really cool ideas. And then today, with the announcement that Escape is returning, just, I don't know how to explain. It's like all the ideas I had that I want to release. Now I have incentive to do it. Yeah. So please look forward to it. I hope to be able to cover a lot more HeroScape content in the future, uh, working with these wonderful content creators right in front of me here uh, regarding the subject, you know, in, in, in various ways. And then my own stuff that I plan to release in regards to the HeroScape series. But yes, my, you know, uh, Jeremy, also known as Protoan. I run the channel uh, The Esalen Call It, which is uh, the underscore Esalen. Uh, you can find me both on Twitch and YouTube and on Twitter. I post a lot on Twitter as well regarding these subjects. And yeah, I'm just <laughs> expect a lot more HeroScape content for my end, for sure. So. Absolutely. And Mr. He's not crazy, he's Joe Crazy. Final thoughts, sir. <laughs> How can you even give me that? How do you even <laughs> say, oh, final thoughts? For now. Um, we'll be talking, I'm sure we we'll be bringing for, for on now. Rude. For um, now. Final thoughts. <laughs> yeah, just to shut me up for now. Um, <laughs> boy, boy, oh boy. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, I'll wrap it up as I'm just so confuffled about all of this. Um, I, I will say that um, I look forward to posting as much as I can. I want to I want to stay on a weekly basis. Um this is after I get settled in moving. Um this was the worst week for me for uh. this to come out. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't have time too much to to go into all of this. Um, I thank Ryan so much for letting me know about it. Um, this today was insane for me. Um, so yeah, as soon as I get myself moved in, I start my new job, I get myself settled in. Um, I'm going to be posting ScapeCon 2 footage and information. I'll go over ScapeCon 3 information. I was reading just through it right now. There's a lot, a lot to cover there. A um, lot of different topics um, and literally anything Age of Annihilation, I am in for it and you'll get um, as much as as much as soon as I get it, which I hope is not too late. Um, mm -hmm. I, I will give it to, to everyone in my community as well. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully you guys know where to find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Twitter, if I can get Twitter to work for me. Um, and of course, on HeroScapers.com, I am not crazy. I'm Joe Crazy 3193. The numbers are just a formality. Um, and by the way, 
just to say it here too, since there's a lot of people here, Joe Crazy is one word. It's capital J, O E, lowercase C, R A Z Y. 3193. One word, one name, and that is I. So, Ryan, thank you so much for having me here. Um, but if anyone wants to, I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit more on, on, on my stream and give my full final thoughts. Um, but, uh, for that, I will, uh, I will say bye to you guys. Um, you guys are awesome. Uh, Jason, it was a pleasure as always. Jeremy, thank you so much. Pleasure. Um, good to see you all, uh, guys all looking all handsome. So <laughs> you too. Right. Yeah. My nice little black That's screen, right? Fun. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> That's no, I got I got your YouTube so thing open too. So. Oh, okay. I'm I'm double screening right now. <laughs> voice is what's important, and I will actually I'm just gonna sign up right now because um, I'm thinking okay it's been a few hours. Um, I'm not gonna worry about editing tonight. Uh, I'm just gonna do some stuff off. off yeah, get some sleep. Stream, and so yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm, I'm just gonna sign up. And as I said before, you know. Um, when it comes to Tales of a Hell itself, you ain't seen nothing yet. I think I think practically, uh, that's what Craig Van Ness just said today, um, and <laughs> I just I I look forward. Like I said, call me, um, and oh my goodness, it just is. This hit me like a freight train today. And when it comes in, in the terms of like um, Tales of a Hell in general, this might have just changed how I'm going to write a few seasons in the in the future, depending on, on mm. where things go. It might end up being the same, but then again, it might not. This this might have just changed everything. So we'll see. And but it it's just it's it's just so awesome that this this mm -hmm. is continuing. It just ah oh, I, I, I can't I don't even have words. It's just just something I I was pacing up and down the house like all day just getting ready for tonight just just knowing that it's like yes okay they announced this on wednesday i live stream on wednesday how convenient yes uh yeah just mm -hmm. just so darn happy and definitely we'll probably be talking a lot about this whatever they talk about in the future actually it my personal guess it wouldn't surprise me if like during gen con or after gen con they start doing some type of kickstarter thing right away I mean, it would be the perfect timing. It, we, yeah, we would eat it up yeah, right now. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise yeah. me. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but with that, uh, I'm going to try and, like, um, what what we just recorded tonight, because I, I did record this as well as I stream it. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, um, it's going to be everything. Like, I'm not going to edit really much of any of it at all. It's just going straight to the Tales of a How the YouTube page. And you all just have to listen to the full two hours of us talking about it because <laughs> it's just it's just all awesome. I, I don't care. I'll, I'll I'll take that hit, whatever algorithm like punishes me for like not you know for releasing a you. two hour video. I don't care. I'm gonna post it because it just needs to be uh, shown and told out there. Um, thank you everybody for commenting. Um, all those who are actually involved in the process for for just throwing a comment or two out there um, on the stream tonight. Thank you guys, all, all the people, all the fans of the show, all the fans of Hero Escape have watched and comment, commented. Thank you uh, guys so much. Uh, you guys are the real heroes. Like, share, <laughs> the, subscribe. The real heroes of Escape. Like, share, subscribe, not just Tales of Ahala, but go go to Jason's YouTube page. Uh, go to Joe Crazy. There'll be links in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. Go go to go to go to Jeremy's uh, Twitch page's YouTube page, like, share, subscribe because this is one of the reasons that this has been released today is because we're producing content showing the love of this game even 12 years dead now now being resurrected and it's because we release the content you guys like and enjoy and share that content it's being circulated literally all over the world can't do this without you guys thank you so much for um just all any type of support that you can give us a like a comment a, a, a subscription a follow it it adds up thank you guys so much and so with that i'm just going to say what i always say actually actually not what i always say because uh 
this ain't going to Conductor Productions uh, website, um, so there will not be any edited down version. I'll, I'll probably put them on both YouTube pages. Um, but just check out Tales of Ahala, check out the interesting content, understand why we like this game so much, why we <laughs> like the lore, why we like the storyline, and the storyline that's to come. Thank you again, Jason, Jeremy, Joe, for joining me li um, live tonight, and I'm sure Thank probably in the invitation. future probably have you guys back on to discuss whatever else they're gonna they're gonna be jumping out in this game although hopefully it's not gonna be a sudden heart attack like today was <laughs> yeah no you and ryan cha ryan yes, change it ryan change your name to a j so we could all be 4j studios <laughs> amazing all right go ahead close it uh, out <laughs> yes sir you all of you out there have a purpose in your life find it pursue it live it and we will see you guys next time. Have a good night. Night, guys. Night. Have a good night.